This episode is brought to you by Caliber Control, the makers of C-Cell. With C-Cell, sensory assessment errors are eliminated and features can be objectively measured. Cell diameters as low as 0.14 millimeters can be quantified, which is hard for the human eye to detect. This is particularly important when optimizing usage levels of expensive enzymes. By measuring the exact changes to key parameters, such as cell diameter or elongation and cell wall thickness, precise dosing levels can be determined based on a cost performance basis. Learn more at www.bakingqualityanalyzer.com. Are enzymes safe for consumption? What's the best way to increase shelf life? How can I remove acrylamides? How can I replace datum in my formula? The answer is enzymes. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Lin show where your questions get more thoroughly answered. Many of you come to bakerpedia.com daily through Google's answer boxes. Why do we appear there? Well, because Google thinks we have the most reliable answers for your commercial baking questions. Google really likes us. So, hey there, thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Lin from Bakerpedia, the world's largest resource for technical baking information. Have a burning baking question? Bakerpedia it! Still have more questions? Place any comments on the topics that you are researching on Bakerpedia and I'll do my best to answer them on this show. All right, here goes. I'm going to focus today's show on enzymes and how and when to use them and how to quantify their effect. Enzymes are present in nature and can be found anywhere, especially in many live organisms like animals, plants, bacteria, and fungi. They are a catalyst to biochemical reactions. What does that mean? Well, simply put, they increase the speed of a particular biological chemical reaction. For example, you know, if you took a shower with just water, Sure, the water will wash away most of the dirt, but if you add some soap to the equation, then it speeds up the process of dirt removal. So yes, enzymes react the same way as soaps do. It quickens the process. And just like the soaps break down during the washing process, enzymes react the same way too. They either break down during the kill step stage with all the baking process, or they denature. The enzymes that you use in your dose are commercially obtained. In this instance, enzymes are produced by fermentation. Yes, the same kind of fermentation that you use for making beer, cheese, and kombucha. You know, just by controlling heat and time, food grade microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi are used to produce these enzymes. Using food sources for the bacteria or fungi, ingredients like molasses or starches and other carbon source ingredients, enzymes can be produced for that specific activity. When that end slurry is obtained, it is then dried down and powders are created. That's how you get them in powder form. Remember, enzymes are proteins made up of amino acids that are very similar to the amino acids found in high protein foods like eggs, meat, fish, and lentils. Don't forget, everything you eat from apples to cheeses all have natural enzymes in it. The ones that are used in the baking industry are made up the same way biologically. 
Therefore, they are safe to consume. One of the reasons why enzymes are considered a processing aid is because it is denatured or destroyed at baking temperatures above 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius. Yes, of course, an enzyme would work great to help maintain the softness of cakes that need a shelf life. There is a product called Active Fresh by Parados that you have to check out. Um, also, please check out my video from episode 27, where I provide six solid tips to give you a longer and softer cake product. What are acrylamides? Go to this page to find out more. So, in 2002, Swedish researchers discovered that significant levels of acrylamide, a potential carcinogen, can be found in heated starch-based foods. Acrylamide forms naturally in food due to the Maillard reaction at about 248 degrees Fahrenheit with low moistures. This happens in many baked, fried, roasted or extruded products and results in the formation of acrylamide which the amino acid asparagine reacts with reducing sugar. Take for example this paper clip. If this paper clip was asparagine and this letter opener was a reducing sugar, when they lock together they form acrylamide. An effective way to reduce acrylamide is to apply the enzyme asparaginase. Asparaginase converts the asparagine into aspartic acid, which bypasses the acrylamide formation. So back to my paper clip and the letter opener. The enzyme will convert the paper clip, which is the asparagine, into aspartic acid. So it just converts it. Enzyme converts paper clip. And then it will no longer be able to hook on the letter opener, therefore not having the ability to form acrylamide. This enzymatic transformation is important to reduce the amount of acrylamides because some baked goods tend to have higher acrylamide levels like crisp breads, biscuits and cookies, crackers and snacks, you know, the low moisture baked foods. Some people just don't like to see datum on the ingredient statement, even though it's absolutely safe to consume. But since your customers insist on it, many bakers are looking towards enzymatic solutions for replacing datum. Remember, ingredient replacements in food systems are not plug-and-play situations. Many times, removing one ingredient requires the addition of several more ingredients to keep its function. In regards to replacing an emulsifier like datum, you have to use a blend of enzymes like lipases, glucose oxidase, and even transglutamase to figure out what would be the best combination for you. There is one machine on the market that quantifies the image of your baked product, which can help with your datum replacement project. A C cell. The accuracy of C cell data speeds up development time as it can produce a lot of information quickly rather than subjective analysis like tasting and looking at a product. So, replacing subjective assessment with objective numbers that are extremely repeatable speeds up development and test time of new formulations. If you're really serious on quantifying your enzyme replacement project, try a C cell.
It goes back to quantification. You have to quantify your test objectively and the best way to do it for datum replacement is via imaging technology. C cell results are reproducible to 3% accuracy, meaning that results are reliable and precise with no room for human error. By having repeatable accurate results, it speeds up new product development or quality control, therefore helping you control the use of your enzymes. C cell reports data such as cell diameter and cell wall thickness are produced up to two decimal places. So for quality control processes, C cell can quantify the consequence of making small adjustments to the process time and conditions. Lastly, C cell quantify results accurately and assess the positive or negative effect of the enzymes on end product quality. Hey, just a shout out to Caliber Controls for sponsoring the production of this Ask Dr. Lin. Caliber is the producer of C cell. C cell is used globally in the baking industry to objectively assess end product quality of baked goods. C cell can help reduce product development time and can be incorporated into daily quality assurance routines. Learn more at www.bakingqualityanalyzer.com. Hey, before I end this episode, I have a favor to ask you. Please give me a like below if I've helped you understand baking science in any way. Also, please subscribe to this channel so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. Well, that's all I have for today. Okay, till the next time, bakers. Have baking quality questions? Bakerpedia it. <laughs>